sermon today. So you'll see the scripture on the screen is John chapter 10, verses 7 uh, through 15. If you have a Bible with you, I would invite you to turn to that. There's Bibles provided for you in the pews. John chapter 10, and beginning at verse 7. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those of you who've been worshiping with us here at Pluckerman Church for some time will no doubt be aware that I regularly bring up the issue of identity. I think identity is one of the most pressing issues of concern for our culture, for our society today. For many people, the question of who and what they are or or what they may be or believe themselves to be seems to be at the forefront of so much discussion. And for many, there's very little clarity. There's often uh, more clarity in terms of what people are not rather than in being able to affirm what they are. In fact, there's a sense of suspicion often when people stand behind their own real sense of identity. People question their sexuality, their gender, their ethnicity, their their privilege, their place in society, their right even to have a place in society, their right to have a voice in various fora and so on and so forth, to the extent that even the way that we perceive one another has been placed under a microscope, and how we see one another may not in fact Uh, uh, be who or what the other person might be, so that the old adage to see is to believe is no longer true, no longer even valid, so it would seem. The question of identity as those around us express it is, is uniquely a Western first world issue in our privilege, which all of us, all of us, regardless of our race, regardless of our sex, our gender, our orientation, have if we live in this part of the world, and our relative affluence, which all of us who live in this part of the world possess, has in many ways coddled us, and in many ways has caused us to have little sense of the struggles that most of the world faces day by day, even hour by hour. And so we create many of our own conflicts, many of our own crises because we can't be content with who we are and the positions and privileges that we are granted in this world. Many have an innate sense that life should be harder, that it should be more challenging, that we have it too easy, that we should be doing more. And since everything is given to us and placed at our feet, we fear we feel guilt and fear and conflict within ourselves. And we don't know exactly what to do with that. So we try to figure out what's wrong with the world, with our society, with the culture, with me. And we arrive at all sorts of ideas and quite consistently miss the point. Many of us know that something is broken. And we do all sorts of things to try and fix it. To the extent that so many get themselves all tied in knots over things that need not be complicated. 
because we have little else to worry about our collective and individual neuroses, uh, find problems where there really are none. And culturally, much that has been embraced, much has been embraced that ought not to be embraced to the extent that we're now lost in a quagmire of confused identity and reality so that very few are willing to say what they truly are, what they truly believe, what truth actually is. Truth has become a synonym for opinion so that every opinion is now considered to be the truth, the truth of the individual. And every truth, in other words, every opinion is equally valid. Even so-called truths that are blatantly contradictory are considered to be true because contrary to the reality that was expressed by John Donne in his famous poem so long ago, each man is an island and we are utterly alone. So much so that we will embrace a multiplicity of truths and opinions even if they contradict our own so that we don't feel alone anymore. And so is it any wonder that we're constantly being asked and asking the questions of identity? Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? To whom do I belong? However much or little we're influenced by this cultural search for identity, all of us to one extent or another have these types of questions rattling around in our heads and in our hearts. Some of you, some of you are football fans, probably most of you, and you no doubt know one of the most famous uh, players of our day, Tom Brady. Back in 2005, he did what's now a very famous interview with 60 Minutes. They were talking about all the achievements this young man had made, the respect that he had on and off the field, the way that he included his teammates in all of his endorsements, the fact that he was married to one of the most beautiful women in the world, that he had signed a massively multi-million dollar contract with the Patriots. They talked about all of these things. And Brady said that he had more than he had ever thought possible. But even in the face of that, he couldn't stop asking, he couldn't help asking himself the question, even in spite of everything, is this all that there is? Is this all that there is? It wasn't a question that expressed a desire for more stuff. He had more than enough stuff. But at the heart of the question was his true identity. I have all of this, and yet none of it satisfies me. So often what we see in the world around us today, people are identifying themselves in all sorts of ways, and embracing all sorts of things and lifestyles and identities, but no one ever seems to be genuinely content. There always seems to be at the heart of so many people that same question, the same question that Tom Brady was asking. Is this all that there is? There often seems to be something lacking. There often seems in the lives of so many to be the need for something more, something else, something different, the next best thing, the greener grass, if you will, on the other side of the fence, whatever that fence may be. And then they, then you discover that the grass is maybe not quite as green as you thought it was, or that it's much harder keeping the greener grass green than you expected it to be. I have little doubt that as much as many around us struggle with the question of identity, as much as I wrestle with the question at times of who and whose I am, many of you also are to one degree or another asking some type of question about your identity. I'm going to be very frank with you. I put a lot of stock in what the Bible says, and I believe that in a very real and authentic way that God speaks to us through the Bible. Now, however you might look at the Bible, however you might understand the Bible, there is an integrity. There is a trustworthiness to the way that it communicates truth, particularly truth about God and the way that God seeks to interact with humanity. There is an authenticity about it. Christians refer to the Bible as the Word of God. 
And there are, a variety, there are a variety of ways to understand that. But one of the ways that's helpful, at least as a starting point, is to consider that the Bible is the Word of God because it points us to the one who is the Word of God, Jesus Christ Himself. There are many things that the various writers of the Bible say about Jesus. And some of them take time to quote the Lord Himself. Very often when we read the words of Jesus, He is talking about His identity and how you and I can find our identity in Him. Nicky Gumbel from the, the Alpha Course has done a wonderful job of breaking down some of these statements that Jesus made about Himself. Listen, listen to some of these. Nicky Gumbel writes this, most religious teachers, they point away from themselves. They say, don't look at me, look at God. Jesus, who was the most humble and self-effacing person who ever lived in pointing people to God, pointed to himself. He said, it's through me that you come into a relationship with God. All of us have what you might describe as a spiritual hunger. 320th century psychologists all recognize this. Freud said, people are hungry for love. Jung said, people are hungry for security. Adler essentially said, people are hungry for significance. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In other words, if you want that spiritual hunger satisfied, come to me. Addiction is a major problem in our society. Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, in other words, if Jesus sets you free, then you shall be free indeed. Many people are depressed, are disillusioned, in despair. They're in very dark places. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. We live in a society where it's often not politically correct to use the word death. We use all sorts of, uh, sorts of other words to describe the reality of death, but avoid that word itself. But the fact is that we die, every one of us. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. I think most people recognize that materialism can in itself never satisfy. We saw that a moment ago as we referred to Tom Brady. People are looking for some kind of spiritual reality. Jesus said, I'm the way. People are looking for values on which to base their lives. Jesus said, I am the truth. I think all of us want some ultimate meaning, purpose to our lives. Jesus said, I am the life. Other people said, that's the way, that's the truth, that's the life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He said, if you receive me, you receive God. If you welcome me, you welcome God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen God. It ends Nicky Gumbel's quotes. We look in all sorts of places. We do all sorts of things and make all sorts of changes to our lives and sometimes to our bodies to make ourselves feel whole. But they never truly satisfy. Always we're looking for one more thing. Dear friends, I want to tell you today that one more thing is actually a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus. He said, I have come, as we read in our Scripture today, that you may have life and have it abundantly. You can look in all sorts of places, you can look at all sorts of things to try to find wholeness, to try to find completion, to try to discover 
your identity. But you'll end up like Tom Brady asking the same question over and over and over again. Is this all that there is? There must be more to life than this. Friends, there is. There is more to life than this. And you'll find it only in the one who is the way, who is the truth, who is the life. Jesus Christ himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.